Alright, what is up guys? Today is May 20th, 2017, and today I have yet another new radio to show you. That's right. A lot of you are probably going to be thinking, oh, Ryan's crazy, he bought himself another radio. But, uh, actually, um, I did not buy this, thankfully. I actually got this out of a fair trade with, uh, the radio I, uh, had here before. For those of you who don't know, I had a Kenwood NX800, uh, Next Edge unit, and, uh, I had gotten that one off of eBay, uh, almost two years ago, and, uh, you know, it, it was brand new when I got it, pretty much, and it was, uh, I had kept it in great condition, it was in, like, new condition, and, um, a couple things bothered me about that radio, for one, it was, like I said, because it was in such nice shape, um, I tend to, um, you know, I'm kind of a clumsy person sometimes, and I know that if I had dinged that radio up or scratched it at all, I would have felt like absolute crap, and uh, also that radio had a lot of uh, newer advanced features on it like NXDN Digital that I knew I would never use. So I figured I would have never used half of what that radio was capable of. And, um, you know, I just uh, overall I just kind of wanted something I could downgrade to that was a little bit less expensive, had less features on it, <clears throat> and um, was kind of in uh, used shape. And uh, this is the result right here. This is a Kenwood uh, TK... 8180H. I got it out of a uh, trade with the school bus company, just like the uh, TK8150 down here. Not the uh, NX800H right here. This one uh, the company gave to me because they were going to be throwing it in the garbage. But um, it's pretty cool because now I have a one of each type of radio that the uh, school bus company uses. So my uh, I kind of have a little bit of a complete collection right here. But uh, this radio and its microphone uh, both came out of bus 2955. I believe it's a 2008 International uh, CE school bus. I'm just going to do a quick overview of it for you guys, and then we'll power it on and test it. So, um, first of all, it should be noted that this is an 8180H unit, so it has uh, 45 watts of transmit power versus your uh, 8180, which only has uh, 30 watts. So, um, that's the big difference between this and the standard 8180. Um, starting from the back, we've got your very small heat sink. We've got your uh, standard... Um, antenna coax connector and your power wires and your ignition sense cable. I'm not really sure what happened with these power wires but they do have uh, crimps on them so it looks like something happened there. I'm not really sure what but um, doesn't affect the operating condition of the radio so I don't care. Um, then uh, of course you got your uh, standard um, Kenwood uh, power connector right there. So Anyway, um, <clears throat> on the front uh, very very similar to your um, your next edge units, very similar. Um, you've got your power button here, your microphone connector, <clears throat> your uh, LED, this light's red for transmit, green for receive, and it flashes orange for selective calls. You've got your speaker and your 12-character uh, uh, LCD here. I believe, uh, yeah, I believe this one is 12 characters as opposed to your, your newer next edge units. I believe these are uh, 15 or 16-character displays right here. Um, <clears throat> we've got all your programmable keys on the front. Um, I don't remember what I have all these programmed for. I, I have this one. These two are doing my volume up and down. These are my channel up and down buttons. Um, and my zone, the B and the C button are my zone up and down buttons. Uh, triangle I'm not using. S is my scan button. A, I think, is my either talk around or clock display button. And then, uh, the square button is, I'm pretty sure that's my talk around button, but it could be clock too, so... Um, like I said, uh, the microphone that I'm using, uh, the microphone that came with it, this is the one that was being used on the bus as well, um, KMC35, very standard, um, I actually had to open this up and put some super glue on it because these pieces, uh, get a little bit, the super glue that's already, uh, inside these things gets, uh, a little bit old over the years and, uh, these whole assemblies come a little bit loose on the back and they start to spin freely and then when you have that, your microphone... Um, kind of slides all around the clip, so I, I don't like that very much. So I put super glue on this piece on the inside, so that's a little bit more secure. But now this whole assembly, this whole part is kind of kind of loose, so I'm gonna have to open it back up and put some more super glue on it. But um, original microphone cable here in very good shape. So, um, so anyway, let's go ahead and power it on, and we'll do some quick uh, transmission tests. Also, it should be noted that obviously I reprogrammed this thing to uh, 
my own programming, and uh, <clears throat> just like my 8180, I have flashed this radio with the uh, Scholar Johnson Passport firmware. Not so I can use it on Passport, you know, not so I can use the Passport trunking, just so I can uh, use the uh, alternate proceed tone on my conventional channels. So, uh, since the uh, Passport, um, that, uh, that Motorola sounding tone can only be found on the Passport's uh, firmware, so, and software. So, um, these are just my... Uh, school bus channels and everything, everything I listen to. Let's go to my GMRS channels and uh, let's do this. I've got my scanner right here on uh, 462.55 megahertz. So we'll go ahead and um, <clears throat> pick up the microphone here and let's uh, test it. WQXZ773 testing. So there's that. Let's go to my GMRS uh, Fleet Sync channels. And uh, I'll go ahead and uh, do some Fleet Sync testing here. WQXZ773 testing. And uh, that's pretty much it. Let's go back and uh, play it on the scanner. Let's turn this volume up a little bit. Replay. WQXZ773 testing. WQXZ773 testing. So there's um, there's Fleet Sync right there. Pretty basic. So uh, there you guys go. That's my new uh, Kenwood TK8180H. Thanks for watching.